exposure to the viewers' comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. If you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it. If you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about, it's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. First comment comes from multi-tool production 7357. And they say, the reason that your quantum grammar channel isn't working out is, as Miller said, people are inherently lazy. Speaking of being inherently lazy or otherwise, the usage of the word your in this sense, in the plain English sense, is not correct. And I see people doing this all the time, as some of you may or may not know. I was in, once an English major in college back in 1996, 1997. And uh, I was also a copy editor where I corrected, you know, people's grammar and things like that. And this is not correct use of the word your. And I would like to help out multi-tool production 7357 by giving them clarity on the correct way to approach this scenario. So from Oxford International English Schools, the top tip for understanding the difference between you and your, your and your, Y-O-U-R and Y-O-U apostrophe R-E is the, Y-O-U apostrophe R-E is a contraction of the words you are. So if you go back to their comment, they say the reason that you are quantum grammar channel isn't working out. Well, that makes no damn sense at all. It wouldn't be you are. It would be the correct usage of the word your would be Y-O-U-R with no apostrophe because your is a possessive, meaning Y-O-U-R is a possessing quantum grammar channel. See, your equals belonging to a person. So that's the difference. One is a contraction of two words and the other is a possessive. I never said it. I don't think I said it was work, wasn't working out. I just said it wasn't giving back what I was putting into it for the rule one rule equal performance. So if I don't reach 6,000 subs by January 1st, 2024, then uh, I'm going to cease investing energy in this channel. Seems you should ignore people that troll you, you're arguing to a camera. And so now we see the word your here, which again is an incorrect use of the, the spelling Y-O-U-R. In this case, it would be the contraction Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, because if you read it in that sense, it would be seems you should ignore people that troll you. You are arguing to a camera. So you would have a comma after it and then Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, arguing to a camera. Let's get something straight, multi hyphen tool productions. There is no argument here. I'm not arguing. If that's your perception of what's going on, well, that's you. You can own that if you want to. However, there is no argument here because when the facts are presented, there can be no argument. Argument only exists where there are opinions. Which brings me to your the sentiment or the volition behind what you just said there seems you should that is a violation that is a trespass upon me and a violation of the channel terms and conditions how so well i bet that you never even bothered to read the terms and conditions of this channel 
like many others. You just don't think to do it. And I try and impress this upon people. When you go into a venue, when you go into someone's house, you go into someone's vessel, you board a vessel, are you conscious of the terms and conditions of the vessel or the venue that you are a guest of? Do you honor those terms and conditions? Or do you just not care and act however you want to act? Because with correct sentence structure, first of all, one would only make a claim for oneself. If I ask you, hey, multi-hyphen tool production 7357, what should I do about those trolls? Well, then, then you can tell me what I should do. Well, Jason, seems you should ignore people that troll you. Then you can present that. But nobody asked you. So now you are trespassing. So what I will do as a favor to you is play you a video that I made because I thought, well, no one's ever really going to read the terms and conditions. No one's going to think to do that. No one has that level of consideration or etiquette. So I'll make a video and publish it so that more people will see it. Obviously, either you saw it or you and ignored it or you haven't seen it. So I will share it with you here. Those of you commenting in my comments field or participating in the chats during the live stream, these are the terms and conditions. If you're a first time commenter or even a regular commenter, you will see a little notification that will pop up when you attempt to write a comment. You can click on that and when you do, this is what you will see. These are the terms and conditions of my vessel. If you do not agree with them or comply with them, either choose not to comment, or if you comment and you violate them, you will be jettisoned. You'll be blocked. You'll be banned. It's that simple. You have to honor the house that you're a guest of, and you are a guest here. So, no gossip, conspiracy theories, belief systems, or trolling. No foul language, rudeness, cussing, etc. And number three, which directly perta pertains to the comment I'm looking at, do not tell others what to do. Do not make it personal. And this is exactly what they're doing here by saying you should ignore people that troll you. I mean, I don't know what this individual's experience is with YouTube. I don't know how many videos they have in their channel, how many years of experience they have in dealing with YouTube comments and speaking with different people. I bet they have zero as far as this uh, YouTube platform goes. So, and then they go on to say, it's not worth the effort to jack up your blood pressure. My blood pressure is fine, but thank you for your concern. And as far as effort being worth this, that, or the third, as master of my vessel, I know what's best for my vessel. You know what's best for your vessel. I did not ask you for your opinion. So the next time you want to give your opinion to me, there are a couple things you can do. The first thing you can do is take your opinion, write it down, and put it in a self-addressed stamped envelope and put it in your mailbox. Or, and this is a choice, because or is one of the two conjunctions, and or is a choice, or the next time you want to share your opinion with me, I'll give it to you. And there you go. R.J. Gould has thrown Miller under the bus and karma will catch up with him. Well... Maybe. I don't know. Thanks for all your hard work, sir. Well, you're welcome. And one last little thing that I must say. I do not participate with these types of titles. I have never asked or commanded anyone to call me sir. I do not accept that. I do accept that it's a sign of, in the fiction, respect. You know, when someone calls you sir... But I don't elevate myself above anyone else, nor do I put myself below anyone else. So titles like Sir, I mean, phonetically, is very similar to S-U-R. So it could mean the exact opposite of what you think it means. Or maybe you mean it in the exact opposite of the way that it is in, the, in its modern sense. 
Who knows? I don't know. From the content of your comment, that's kind of up in the air. So what I would ask of you, multi-tool production 7357, is please pay attention to your spelling. Pay attention to your grammar. Please pay attention to the terms and conditions of this vessel construct if you're going to comment on here any further. Please honor the terms and conditions. Thank you. Next comment comes from AAAA-BK7KQ. Thanks for the reply. Maybe I can elaborate a bit here. I called Colin David Eiffel Win Colin Miller the king because of the same sentiment when you have talked to him on the phone as you stated. I wonder now and then, is his daughter of which Colin David spoke in his seminars or more children of him active in the CSSCPSG realm? Which? W-I-C-H. Do they mean W-H-I-C-H or W-I-T-C-H? That's interesting. I'd have to say it's the former. I don't know if this individual is asking me a question or if they're just wondering aloud. But since we're here, and with the balance of the honor and the grace, I will say that Colin David Ivan Colin Miller's daughter knows very little about correct sentence structure, probably less than you do. And I know this from, uh, because I have communicated with her in the past. And every now and then the name Raven comes along, but I can't seem to find any material of Raven or other people who had direct contact with Colon David. Uh, Colon Raven hyphen Farhad hyphen Tahiti Colon Afarin is my beloved brother, friend, and also grammar tutor. He is in the private and confidential. He has nothing to do with the quantum grammar uh, scenario in the public. He has nothing to do with it, wants nothing to do with it. Uh, and I respect and honor his privacy and confidentiality. I do remain in contact with him on a fairly regular basis. But as far as his own private life and things like that, he has no desire to be any part of this. He's very private and I honor that privacy. Thanks for the numerous times you have offered me the consultation. If my situation lets me, I will take your offer. So your situation is the authority of your construct. Is that what you're saying to me? so that you are incapable of having a 10 to 15 minute video consultation with me, which costs nothing except for your now space. You are incapable or you're not allowed to have a 10 to 15 minute video consultation with me because your situation will not allow you. Hmm. That's an interesting way to put it. The second comment in this clarity closure video, I meant if you change course to the TikTok platform, I am all aboard, but I prefer YouTube. My English is not perfect. I apologize. My native language is Dutch. Kind regards. Okay. Right. I don't think anyone's English is perfect. Your English is better than that multi-tool guy at the beginning here. If that is even a guy, I don't know if it's a guy or not. I'm sorry. I don't mean to assume gender. <laughs> in this day and age, but your English for not being a native English speaker is better than that individual's English. So cool. Um, thank you for the kind words and for the membership. Next comment comes from correct hyphen quantum hyphen grammar. And this friends and neighbors, I'm showing you right now, is an example of 100% quantum gobbledygook. It looks like it's something complicated, and it looks like something that's similar to correct sentence structure communication parsley syntax grammar, but it is definitely not. There are two position loadial fact phrases in front of a verb when you write a correct sentence structure. For the facts, of the facts, are with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts. That's the most basic common structure. 
point being, for the facts of the facts are. For the Jason height from Matthew of the glass is. Get it? Let's count how many in the first, just the first sentence, let's count how many position lodial fact phrases come in front of the verb. For the, of the, J hyphen Rusi, with the, Gould's hyphen betrayal, of the, with the, David hyphen win, of the, Miller. Six position lodial fact phrases in front of the verb. <clears throat> Survey says, this is quantum gobbledygook. Not even going to go into the rest of it with all the particles of negation and the fact that this individual is making a claim for whoever J hyphen Rusi is. With correct sentence structure, you can only make a claim for yourself. You do not make a claim for someone else. That is a trespass. That is a fiction psychology. If you do things like this, you are no better than the fiction babble oppressive system. And I have offered this individual consultations before, whoever they are. They don't, they refuse to credential themselves. They don't want to step up under the geometric level playing field. They know my full correct name. They refuse to share theirs. I have offered them, uh, a consultation so that they can ask me grammar questions because if they like the name of their channel is at the correct hyphen quantum hyphen grammar how can they even say that when their level of grammar is below rudimentary beginner level i mean it's it's not even beginner level so to each their own but i will definitely not be publishing anything like this because it's complete quantum gobbledygook. Next comment comes from R period 4 tau 6332 and they said did a lot of research about Russell but I couldn't find almost any proof of his contracts and claims. What in the hell does that mean? I couldn't find almost any proof of his con. So what is almost? If you say you almost made it to the finish line that means you're almost there but you didn't quite make it. So you didn't make it. So that means I couldn't find any proof. So why would you put the word almost in there? That's very confusing to me. It kept me also from learning quantum grammar. I think they mean G-R-A-M-M-A-R, -M -M especially if I have to use it in my native language. Okay, so I don't know what their native language is. So we can excuse some of their mistakes. But again, it comes down to how correct do you want to be? No matter what venue or form of communication you're using, how clear do you want to be? Do you care if you're clear when you communicate? Because those people that take the time to proofread, that take the time to edit what they're saying into a clear, concise manner, those are the people that I want to teach. Because they clearly have a commitment to clear communication because that comes down to your fate writ volition claim. If you have one or you don't have one, your fate is basically determined by how well you can communicate. And uh, we'll leave it at that. Next comment comes from AP-ZQ4FX and they say, thanks JMG for all the transmission of knowledge that you give. I'm watching many of your videos and learning greetings from Argentina. Angel. Gracias, Angel. Next comments come from Raddy Kapara Boo 4362. No, so, so much. It burns my heart. Here for right, aus, nest, and correct justice. Please do not stop, not hear about the grammar. I don't know if this individual's first language is English. But I know that they drop a lot of comments in this style, and I rarely am able to comprehend any of them. But thank you for the comments. I appreciate the activity. Next comments come from Ega0117. Who is Mark Christopher? And have you, have you ever talked with Russell J. Gould? This has all the earmarks of someone 
who hasn't bothered to do any research at all, that they're new here. Of course, so let me put myself in their shoes. We've all been there, right? Where we don't know, we walk into a situation and we don't know shit about what's going on. So we start asking questions. What I have learned to do when I walk into a situation that I'm not familiar with is if, if I'm fortunate enough to have a position to do so, before I even open my mouth, I start researching. I pull up Google, I type in colon mark hyphen lowercase k Kishon colon Christopher. And I look up his name and I find information about that guy. And I look at this YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass. And then I look up the words Russell J. Gould. And then I, I look, I start looking through videos. And then I can probably answer my own questions without having to open my mouth and ask to be spoon fed by other people. That's just the way I look at it, folks. And again, like I said at the beginning, don't take it personal. All right. Just very straightforward about it. So I'm not going to tell you who Mark Christopher is. Okay. You can easily find that out yourself. Have you ever talked with Russell J. Gould? Yes, I have communicated with him many, many times via email between 2017 and January of 2020. Another one from AAA-BK7KQ, and they say, Hi there, Jason. Can you please tell me what is this Trivian method is? Can you please tell me what this Trivian method is? It seems difficult to find. Don't even know if I spelled it right. I certainly want to learn the grammar. This Trivian method should be a plus to the Q grammar psychology. It's Trivium method. T-R-I-V-I-U-M. M-E-T-H-O-D, Trivium Method, okay? And you just Google it. It'll come right up for you. I guarantee it. And another one from the same individual, and they say, I once was involved in a dialogue with a head housing consultant of a certain housing company. These people have a professional, fictional vocabulary. Well, everyone that uses plain English has a professional fictional vocabulary. When I use the term correct facts, they copied the term. Interesting thing about that, quadruple A, there is no such thing as an incorrect fact. If a fact is not correct, it is not a fact. It's either a fact or it's not a fact. There's no such thing as a correct fact. Because then it, that implies that there's an incorrect fact. You see what I'm saying? So I would never use that term in my own construct, much less a correct sentence structure contract, construct. There is no such thing as a correct fact. It's either a fact or it's not a fact. So funny when these people try to screw you with their nonsense and they copy certain terms, which then in turn being used in arguments against you. This becomes obvious after some interactions with professional people. They will have a similar approach to surpass. They will have a similar approach to surpass. Guess it's their training in which how to interact with the public. Well, if you're talking about housing consultant and housing companies, I'm sure that their HR department has trained them in communication. I mean, when I was a manager in a huge uh, corporation, just one manager among many, they would send us to a university for a couple weeks every year to learn how to communicate with the public and how to communicate with customers and customer service and things like that. So yes, they do train people in how to speak and that is not necessarily a bad thing because being able to communicate clearly and concisely is very important. Take your correct facts terminology, for example. Someone that knows how to communicate clearly would never use the word correct facts because they would know that a fact is correct. That's like calling, that's like saying, um, go drink some 
wet water. <laughs> water is wet. We know this. You wouldn't put wet water. You wouldn't put correct facts. Water is water. Facts are facts. I hope that makes sense. And the final comment comes from Tin Rib Music, and they say, Thank you for your correction of some utter trespass hokum, a belief system, minds, program at work. I concur. Trespass and coercion is not okay. Well, in a plain English sense, you would not use the verb is. You would say trespass and coercion are not okay, because that's two things. Would you concur that if children were given a book of fallacies, we would not be here now? Uh, no, I would not concur with that because there's, that's per participating with speculation. What I can say is that it is my perception that in the late 1800s, early 1900s, they took logic out of the school systems. Like school systems used to be taught using something similar to the trivium method, which I mentioned earlier. And that's how you could get, like in the country, you would have one teacher and then you would have a whole schoolhouse full of children from grades 1 through 12, all in one building. And you could do that because of the trivium method, because they used the trivium method to teach the teacher would be teaching one thing, and then the other t uh, students would be teaching each other using the trivium method. But they definitely took out the logic of the curriculum. And now you're just left with grammar and rhetoric, which is what you see these days, which zero critical thinking. Now, if, if that you know, logic would have remained in the school system up until this day, would we be here now? Well, yeah, we would still be here now. We would be here now regardless of what was being taught. <laughs> That's, uh, I don't really get into questions like that. That has absolutely zero value in my construct, but I appreciate the question. And then they say, I'm good with you being you. Matthew, Jason, your venue, your mind. That is correct. And that is correct psychology. Thank you very much for your membership and for your comments. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.